everyone this is Trisha and welcome to my channel so today I put together a beautiful mini Easter basket wreath it was really easy to put together and super fun and I'm going to show you the supplies that I used and how I put it all together so let's get to crafting all right so here are my supplies I'm going to be using uh, these items that I purchased from Hobby Lobby now, most of these items were pretty much at 40% off because they do have their Easter crafts at 40% off and they had uh, their uh, greenery and I think floral bushes at 40% uh, off. The only thing I didn't get on sale was this little wreath, but it is only a $5 wreath. So it was pretty inexpensive. It's really pretty. I kind of chose one that looked a little bit, you know, not so perfect. And I do like this little piece of wood here that kind of a little thick piece that kind of sticks out I want to make sure I show that because I don't want to hide that I think it's really pretty all right so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start removing some of the tags off of these items I'm not going to use every little single thing that I have here I want to use just you know a few things out of my little packages here so let me show you real quick what I have I've got some little Easter baskets little Easter bunnies I don't think I have to repeat Easter, but here's some little chicks. Oops, that's kind of dark, right here. Little chicks. Some little carrots. Easter eggs. And then I've got this really pretty uh, ribbon that has different uh, colors and stripes. It's really pretty. And of course I showed you the, uh, the greenery that I have. So just pick whatever you want. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, get started on this. Like I said, I'm going to remove things from their tags and out of their packages. So we can go ahead and start uh, putting together the little mini Easter baskets. All right, so I want to start by assembling together the little Easter baskets. Uh, I realized that I should have gotten some little Easter grass, but I happen to have some from the Dollar Tree, so that's the only thing I didn't get from Hobby Lobby. All right, so I've got some little Easter grass, and they're like long uh, pieces, so I think I'm going to cut them a little bit shorter. Not not too much, but just maybe in the quarter length of what they were. Just so they're a little bit easier to manage. I'm going to put these aside because I don't know how much I'm going to use, and I don't want to cut up so much. I do think I want to do at least three little baskets. So what I'm going to do with all this... Uh, little grasses and I'm going to ball it up and then I'm just going to be tugging it in into little spaces in my little baskets. Okay, let me try and see how these are going to fit. I've got, oh, I've got pink and white, but I think I want to use, definitely want to use a white bunny, so I'm not going to use the pink one, so just use whatever ones you like. I don't recall if they had these in other colors, uh, but if they had them in tans or browns, I know I would have grabbed them, so... Um, Maybe they didn't have them in those colors. Okay, so I'm going to use these white ones. I want to put them in the basket. They're not going to be all the way in there. I just I want to glue them kind of high. And I'll glue it to the side here rather than gluing them to the bottom of the basket. So that I can make sure that, um, you know, we can see them. and They're not hiding. So I'm going to go ahead and glue the first one in there. I've got my hot glue gun ready. At least I think I do. Yes, I do. All right, so I'm going to put one together and then I'll do the other two off camera. All right, so there's a the little basket with Bunny in it already. Okay, so I think I wanna use these little yellow chicks. Absolutely, so I'm gonna grab three of them out of the package. I had pulled up three already, but I realized they were the blue ones. And you know what guys, I don't wanna use the blue ones. I wanna use the yellow ones. Okay, and then I've got the Easter eggs and I've got carrots. So I'm gonna pull out three carrots. Cause like I said, I, whatever I do, to one basket, I'll do it to the other two. All right, as far as the eggs are concerned, I'll choose those as I go along. And a little, a little bunny here already has a little carrot on him, but I'm still gonna add another little carrot and I'm gonna glue it to the front here of the little handle. Kind of a little bit inside and, and on the handle. So right about there. I also want my little chicky chick to show up pretty good. So obviously, again, I am not going to glue it way down at the bottom, but off to the side. So I'm going to glue it to the front here, kind of center. <laughs> that looks so cute already. Look at that. Okay. Now some eggs. 
Let's see, the grass is green, so let's put a blue one at the front here. Pretty blue egg right there. And a pink one at the back. I think those would be enough, just like that. And now I can take this little grass, like I said, just bundle it up. I'll have to cut this one a bit. Just bundle it up. You know what? Maybe I have to cut it a little bit more. <laughs> so just cut it, but just cut it as you go, okay? That way you don't have a whole bunch of pieces of grass and, you know, just, you know, and, you know, you don't have it all cut up. I'm going to dip some or add some glue, or dip the glue, place some glue in there on the edge. And then I'll get some of this grass and kind of bunch it up a little bit, try not to burn myself, and then just tuck it in. And then just hope that most of it gets grabbed onto the glue there. And just push it in. So it kind of fits a little tightly and things kind of hold it together. And then you can just trim, see, like that. And I'm going to fill in the rest of it. Again, trim. And I think I'm going to put some right in front of that little bunny between the bunny and the chi chick here. So I'll just put some glue on the front of the bunny and the little belly. So that little carrot's going to get covered up a little bit. But that's okay because we added another carrot. A little detail of a carrot. Okay, so now I'm just going to throw some more of this little grass in there. Little bits that I have left over here on the table. Try not to burn myself. So I'll just use the tip of my scissors. Yeah, let's grab another piece here. And tuck that in. And once again, I am going to trim. And there we go. Let me trim this little part in the back here. I think that looks really cute. Okay, so my next step uh, is actually going to be uh, making a bow to go on my wreath. And I want to see how big I should make it. Now, I decided that I want this little piece of wood. You know, decide how, how you want your wreath. And do you want your bow hanging off the bottom, off to the side, or on the top? Either way works. I kind of like the idea of it coming, the, coming off the top and then just kind of draping. You know, the little tails kind of draping off of here. Hmm. Then I also like bows at the bottom, so I'm going to go with my initial thought of just putting it at the bottom because I just realized if I want to put stuff here, these ribbons probably cross over, you know, everything and it won't look drapey like I think I want it to look. It might just, they just might just be laying on there. So I'm going to go ahead and have the tails hanging off the bottom and I think I want a good length. So I'm going to go ahead and cut them, cut the length separately of the, the um, tail. So just like that and usually I fold my ends in half and then from the fold about an inch or an inch and a half in depending on the width of your ribbon uh, you can go or actually even less because it might be a very thin ribbon all right so from the fold just decide where you want to start it you work your way up towards the ends and you have this little uh, dovetail type of cut now I didn't want that I wanted an angle so I'm gonna go ahead and just cut off that one little bit there and let's do the other end similar. I don't have to be matchy matchy. There we go. Oops, my dog. <laughs> She's making a mess. Excuse me. Okay, so my dog actually made me a favor. She found <laughs> this yellow. I had already purchased this with little pink flowers on it and I found this one. It fell out when she was um, grabbing my stuff with the yellow. So I'm going to go ahead and use a little bit of that as well. Okay. I'm back to our bow. These are my tails. They're going to hang off right about there. So now I want to make my bow. Now this isn't a wire edge uh, ribbon, so I can't make like really big loops. You know, I can, but they're not really going to stay like perfectly in shape. They could drip, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and pinch, make my first loop. And I'll, obviously I don't want my bow to be too big because my wreath isn't too big anyway. So... That's about four inches. 
pinch and twist. This is the upper side of the uh, ribbon, which would be the nice side, but actually this this uh, ribbon has is a uh, double sided, so it wouldn't matter, but I'm still going to be doing my little pinch and twist. Make another little loop. And just make as many as you want. And use your previous loops to measure. If you want to know about this uh, ribbon, it was regular $5.99, but I got it at 40% off, so I probably paid about $3.40 something cents, about. And this has 10 yards in it, and it's a one and a half inch ribbon. You can certainly use a two and a half inch ribbon, you know, the width. I think that'll be enough. That's six loops. And I'm just going to cut a piece of wire. You can use a piece of a chenille stem and make it a little long. Okay. And then I'm going to grab this more or less at the center, place it behind my bow and just pinch it and then wrap wire around the whole thing, make it nice and tight, and I twist my bow because that tightens the wire or twists and tightens the wire towards the bow rather than coming down, you know, the length of the, you know, the ends here. Okay, once I have it where I want it, I'm going to go ahead and cut this center piece that I started at an angle. When I finished off the last loop, the little bit that was left, I also cut it in an angle. It's not very nice, so I'm going to just redo it. That way I don't have to worry about hiding those ends, and they'll look pretty, okay? All right, so this little bow will then go on my wreath right about here. And I'm going to go ahead and attach it now because then I don't place anything where the bow is and then hide it with a bow. And it's just a waste of material. So I'm going to go ahead and I have these long bits. I, you know, the wire cut a little bit longer than I thought I would need because I'm going to go ahead and push it through the grapevine. And you can just grab a little bit of it, but I'm going to go ahead and push it through and then pull it from where they pop out in the back. Here's one of them. Oops, I can't grab it. There we go. And then just twist them in the back nice and tight. So your bow stays in place and doesn't flop around. Okay, so now I'm just uh, straightening out my bow the way that I want it. And that's what it's going to look like. Now behind it, at the top, I will also want to put a piece of wire so I can make like a little loop so that I can use that to hang my wreath. And it's just grabbing some a good length of wire again and I've got about I don't know eight inches or so maybe a little bit less you can do a little bit more depending on what size of a loop you want I just want one that's going to be enough to hang on a little nail that I have on my door so make your loop uh, to so that it'll fit around whatever it is you're going to hang it on whether you're using a tack a nail a screw or if you have a wreath hanger I'm going to go like that straight up and then just I fold it in half and twisted it to make it thicker and then I'm just going to wrap it around just to make sure that I grab some good pieces of grapevine and then just make a little bit of a couple of twists here and then make my loop and twist those ends together super simple you guys and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some a little bit of hot glue there so it doesn't move around on me just stay in place okay as soon as it's dry we'll continue with the wreath all right so i'm going to start adding some greenery so i'm going to go ahead and start preparing the bits that i'm going to be using i've already cut off a couple of pieces from this bush with a little pink flower so what i did is i just pushed up these uh bits of leaves because these you can push them up sometimes you can't so if you can't you can just you know trim in between to make smaller pieces or if you like the whole long piece that's fine i'm going to cut them you know about that size and i'm probably going to cut some from the yellow as well so let me go ahead and do that 
I'm going to leave these a little bit long, but I'm going to push up the bottom ones a little bit so that I have some piece of stem here at the bottom that I can use to insert into my wreath or styrofoam if I was using it in an arrangement. And I'm going to cut three as well. I'll probably cut a little bit more, but maybe not. We'll see. So put those out of the way. This one here also is able to, you know, I'm also able to slide these up. So I'll cut off a few and get them ready. I'm going to cut off three again. And then I already had to cut this other one as well. Okay. All right. Let's go ahead and start adding some of this greenery to our wreath. Okay. Now, I said I have this little piece of wood here that I want to show. So I want to make sure I don't put anything on top of it. Now, this other side is not as full as this side, and that's fine. The wreath does not have to be asymmetrical. I'm going to take some of these long pieces of um, these uh, greenery. i put it too close to get stark. So I'm just going to hold it right here so you can see it. All right, so glue on the tip and just insert. And I'm going to lift the bow up a little bit so that I can see where I'm putting it. There we go, right there. Just like that. Get another one of these. I'm going to do it on this side as, as well. Making sure I don't cover that piece of wood. And I'm going to take uh, the other piece of yellow. I'll just trim a little bit. Again, I'm going to curve it so that it goes along the actual wreath right about here. I was going to do it the fuller side on the other side, but I realized I like it more on the left side as I'm looking at it, but it would be the right side of the wreath. Okay. All right, now I'm going to take the pink and fill in in between somewhere. I'm going to put it right here. I'm going to put one a little bit higher up here. This will balance it off with the other side. See? A little bit. I'm not trying to be asymmetrical. Okay. Trying not to cover that little bit of wood. Okay, now let me add these. I'm going to make this one a little bit shorter. Yeah, right there. Lift up my bow so I can see what I'm doing. And this helps, you know, bring up my bow a little bit. You know, it poops it up a little bit. I'll continue adding things. You add them as you like. I'm going to take these leaves now and I'm going to push again to the top because I want to make these a little bit shorter. Just little short bits like that to insert here and there. I'll start by Adding some under the bow. Again, to poof up, you know, help poof up my bow so it doesn't lay so flat. slightly upward like that as I'm sliding them in because I don't want them to lay you know like flat on there this will 
This will give them, you know, the leaves a little bit of a lift so they're, you can see them from the front. I'm just putting them where I feel like, okay, I have a bare spot. So I'm going to fill it in. Okay, I'm going to turn it over this way because I just have one more. There we go. That looks really pretty just as it is. It makes a really pretty spring wreath. All right, so now I'm going to decide of the placement of my little baskets. And I've decided that I want one on this side. I want one right about right here. So I'm gonna lift this a little bit right here. I want it right here. And then also another one, almost about the same. Now I'm looking at it and making sure my, my bunny baskets are, you know, upward, not slanted like that. Don't follow your wreath. Follow, you know, where what is your bottom and what is the top of your wreath. Okay, I'm gonna tuck that in there and I think this one up here. I think that looked really cute. All right, so all we're gonna do is just add lots of hot glue behind the little basket and push it down onto the greenery. There we go. One more up here. Let's see, let me open this up a little bit more so I can see where I'm gonna place it. I think right there. And then just move your greenery around a little bit so that it's not, you know, you don't have some little pieces that are crushed too much. Some of them can be going in front of your little baskets. You don't want to cover what's in them. So look at that. It looks so cute. I think it does. Okay, we could stop there or we could add more. So I've decided to take uh, more of these little carrots and glue them here and there just to add more color to it. So I think I need one right about here. Maybe one right there. Just tuck them in anywhere that's so cute. I think so. Okay, now I'm going to take my little Easter eggs and do the same thing. Okay, that's good enough. All right, everyone, there is my wreath all finished. I am getting the camera up close so that you can see things really nicely. There we go. Another little basket up on the top here. And of course, I had another one down on this side. I really enjoyed making this little wreath. Of course, you can put whatever you want, but I think the idea of making little tiny little mini baskets is it's really good. And these supplies aren't very expensive. You can pretty much find them at any uh, craft section of your store, you know, like Walmart even, uh, Michael's, Hobby Lobby even. might You might even find some at uh, the Dollar Tree. So if you find these little mini little things and you don't know, okay, what am I gonna do with them? Put them together and put them in a wreath. So there we go. Now, if you want to hide some little, you know, plastic Easter eggs in there as well, that would look lovely or put some more flowers. Of course, you can do whatever you want. You can use this idea for any season when you find these little miniature things and you just don't know what to do with them. All right. So I really enjoyed it. I hope that you did too. So I'm going to give myself a big old fat thumbs up and I hope that you too will give me a thumbs up and leave a kind comment down below and let me know what you thought of my, uh, project today my little mini Easter uh, basket wreath <laughs> I don't know what to call it yeah that's what it's gonna be a mini Easter basket wreath all right everyone thank you all so much for watching if you enjoyed the content of my video today please subscribe uh, to my channel you can just hit that red subscribe button and then please on your notifications choose all so that you get notified as soon as I upload a video I want to thank you all so much for watching and supporting my channel and as always Enjoy.